thing in one leg, put off the scrape because I did some damage on it. Uh, the foot's only 5,000, it's important I need to almost that thing off because I need a 5,000 chain in behind the gasket just to make sure the print of it on the, on the bearing right. Fuck it on the bear and race, so it is going to make some show when it's put in a down and a half, it's very good. That's excellent. I just wish for that for say as well, it wouldn't do any harm. Just cheat and go slightly above centre height just to get that tool in. Right, that's most of the nasty rough bits taken out of it. Right, we've eventually got the, the right bearing for the job, or at least hopefully the right bearing. At least it's a, a genuine Timken bearing. The other one was piss wobbly slack in there. That's not exactly a tight fit. There's no movement on it. All I can do really is glue that bearing in there with some high strength Loctite. And the original bearing was quite tight and there's no wear on the no wear on there. This is all you can get so I'll wash it out with some brakes and load know, the air and track in, go from there. Right, one shot. Set so we can finish assembling it. Right, I'm ready now to assemble the, the bearing. Bearing drops under there. And it hits the shoulder there. And that's the interference fit between that shoulder and the bearing. That's what 
grips it onto the half shot so it's going to be quite tight onto there. To push the bearing in you must push on the inner track of the bearing that bit there. I've got a little bit of tube here which is the wrong side, well it would be wouldn't it? So I need to bore the end of that out so it'll, it'll clear there then we can use that to press the bearing on. So the weight goes together that goes onto there and the oil seal rubs on that face there like that then the bearing goes on like that, all pressed together I've packed the bearing with grease before it goes together come on you bastard what I think first I'll machine it up with this tube so it's a a nice fit across there and then we can take it outside and press the bearing on. We'll be able to support the tube and the press here upside down then press the half shot through the bearing. Put it away from the the chuck face because I'm going to need to bore this out and we'll need something to bore out into if the airspace behind it so we'll do, dig the boring bond to the chuck just carefully to face the end because I'm sticking out quite a bit here Stop cutting so bring it back out. Put a really good finish in there. If I needed a good finish, I guarantee you it wouldn't. Uh, I'll have a measure on the shaft and then we'll measure up the hole. One more light cut up. Do it. tube's a nice fit across there we will be pushing on that part of the bearing so it won't, it won't hurt the bearing anyway the only problem I'm going to have is mounting this on the on the blocks on the press the thing is I'm doing like a kit for him so he can do his own bearings I think I'll weld a collar on here so it sits nice and square on the base of the press right, I've found a suitable victim in there scrap box and just weld that onto there and that means when it goes on the press table it'll rest nice and easily on the on the square plate we'll just find the centre and then bore a hole at the wood we'll corner at the corner so we're gonna an approximate centre Decent punch mark in it, centre punch mark. Just 
Somebody's bound to comment that that tap will shatter. I've been hitting the tap with a hammer like that as a centre punch for the last 40 years and I haven't shattered any yet. I suppose as always the first time. Right, we'll put this in the four jaw chuck and put a hole through it. There's an easy method of setting this up in the four jaw chuck. I'm going to put the parallel in there because I need the space to job out from the back of the chuck you know work piece goes in like that another parallel and then we'll simply wind in the lay of tail stock until it goes into that centre punch mark like that right so that's got the work piece held firmly against the two parallels square it up so it's going to and all you do is nip up each jaw and turn Right, so basically that now is running reasonably true. Right, we can take the parallels out. I want you to take the rag out of the inside of it. So that's a nice tight fit in there. I'll just run a nice bead of weld around it, and that's uh, a bead of MIG snot will be perfectly acceptable. It doesn't mean anything fantastic. Right, we've run a little bit of MIG around it, that's all it needs. And plenty of grease in the bearing. It's only just smearing a bit around the outside, you need to work it in so it goes into the, into the actual rollers. Just ordinary automotive, multi purpose bearing grease. Nothing special, it's just a, a very slow running bearing. But it has got quite a lot of load on it. Let's work it, make sure you get some in there. There's a lot of the trouble with some of your cheap imported machinery, the bearings on grease properly, you've just got a, a bit of grease rubber on the outside. And it's horrible grease at that. Right, so that's a bit of grease in there. I'll put it into here as well, it won't do any harm.
right, the bearing drops on, goes on to its laying yoke port, and that's the register there, that's what we're going to press it onto. Right, this thing is still a little bit warm, that goes down there, that will be mounted on the press table, and then it will press on the end of the horse shaft, that will push that bearing down nice and square. steel locker ring which actually holds a bearing on is a real tight fit down there. Easiest way to fit is to heat it up, heat it red hot and then drop it on. Before you do that you make sure you've got your collar that fits and a hammer because if you haven't got them the bastard will jam half of you down. So we'll get it hot and see if we can get it on first time. And once that, once that shrinks on here, that's got it by the balls, that's it. Once again, it's just time to say thanks very much for watching, thanks for subscribing, and as always, a massive thanks for all well wishes and nice comments that are coming in. And the arm is definitely improving. Um, it's only been seven weeks. I was at hospital with it on Monday, and they're quite pleased with the progress, so as long as it keeps progressing the way it is, I'll be very happy. Anyway, thanks for watching. You bastard, it's warm that man, John. By John, you're a. F what did you do that for, you useless bloody whore? Anyway.